NBC Boston 10 app. Download it now. They are not giving up any ground soon, but there's a sign we may break this pattern with a storm. Pete, the cold not stopping. Some people from spending the first day of 2018 outside, how some families are keeping up with tradition. And a fire continuing to burn at a gas main in Roslindale. The effort's underway to make sure that people continue to have heat. This is NBC10 Boston News at 7. It is a clear but very cold start to 2018. You're looking live right now at downtown Boston, where many people start the new year inside. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Chris Emma. This streak of frigid temps continues as many people get ready to head back to work. Let's check in with our meteorologist Pete Bouchard joining us right now. Pete, you're also tracking a big storm out in the water, right? I'm watching that as it comes out of the Bahamas of all places and goes to Nova Scotia. We'll be on the fringe of that, but being on the fringe of that storm on Thursday is a big deal. Get into that a little later on. But first, the cold. Let's get back to what we know. All right, Pete, thank you. And happening right now, the Steamship Authority is canceling all of its high-speed ferry service between Hyannis and Nantucket, all due to the icy conditions in Hyannis Harbor. You can see the icy conditions right here. That ferry service to Nantucket expected to resume back on January 5th. The route to Martha's Vineyard does not resume until April. And the MBTA is asking commuters to plan ahead for possible delays tomorrow morning. The agency asking people to plan ahead and add about 20 minutes of travel time to their normal schedules just in case. MBTA says it is the, all because of the frigid weather that we've been experiencing, and crews are now working around the clock to keep things up and running. Well, it may make you shiver just looking at it. It's doing it for me. Hundreds of people brave the cold for the annual L Street Brownies New Year's Day Plunge. The Brownies are the oldest polar bear club in the entire country. Well, that's just one way that people brave the cold weather on this New Year's Day. Our drill in Akron shows us what it was like at Copley Square. Saw them last night. They are amazing. Stay with NBC10 Boston as we follow this winter weather. You can check out the temperature before you head out with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. All you have to do is head on over to NBC10Boston.com or you can download our free mobile app. Well, a gas main fire under control, but continuing to burn in Roslindale tonight. The cold temperatures impacting efforts right here. Our Michael Rosenfield joined us live from Roslindale with the very latest. Michael. Chris, tonight the fire is still burning right here in the middle of High Park Ave. This is the scene right behind me, and the expectation is that this should be fixed at some point tonight. The new year kicking off with a different kind of fireworks in Roslindale after something went wrong while utility crews worked on an underground gas line. The four national grid workers who are injured have been treated and released from the hospital. Right now there is a section of High Park Avenue that remains shut down to traffic as workers continue to work on this issue. Live in Roslindale tonight, Michael Rosenfield, NBC10 Boston. Michael, thank you for that update. New tonight, Boston police responding to a double shooting in South Boston. They say that one victim is in critical condition. The other suffered non-life-threatening injuries. They are still searching for a suspect. Sad scene in Littleton today with the state's first fire fatality. Investigators say that they are still looking for a cause, but a hoarding station made it difficult for them to actually do their jobs. Jan Carner did not make it out of the home on King Street. Her husband, seen right here, losing their home and his wife, the Red Cross, now working to help him. Right now he's very distressed. Um, he had a major fire. He lost his wife. They've been married quite a long time. Firefighters say that once they got the flames under control, clutter blocked them from getting in those entrances, making it very difficult to navigate. A mechanical issue forcing a plane to return to the gate at Logan Airport today. American Airlines says that passengers reported an odor in the cabin very shortly before the plane was scheduled to leave for Charlotte. Three crew members and a passenger were taken to the hospital. Airlines says that the plane was taken out of service and passengers would be put on a different plane. Happening today, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh officially sworn in to a second term. Vice President Joe Biden, he was on hand to help. Our Allison King takes a look at the mayor's plans for the future. We need leaders who will stand up against the ugly divisiveness spewing out of Washington every day. Former Vice President Joe Biden was the special guest presiding over Mayor Marty Walsh's second inauguration, bolstering the mayor's reputation as a man of the people. You know, uh, there isn't a phony bone in this guy's body. Biden praised Walsh for his leadership and courage following a year where Walsh received national recognition for standing up to the Trump administration, a point referenced by the mayor. At a time when the national conversation too often turned mean, we, we recommit ourselves without reservation to feeding the hungry, 
housing the homeless confronting racism and welcoming the immigrant and we always will in his address walsh spoke to the city's least fortunate with a promise to bring back a long island homeless and drug treatment facility that closed when the bridge connecting the island to quincy was torn down in 2015. i pledged you today that we are and we will rebuild the bridge back to long island but it is the city's struggling middle class where walsh put his emphasis promising to create strong 21st century schools good jobs affordable homes in safe neighborhoods, a better Boston for everyone. I just like the, the moving forward, the progressiveness. He's a regular person. He's from Dorchester, Savin Hill. I'm a union guy. He's a union brother. I love Marty. This is a match made in heaven. Marty Walsh in Boston. In his speech, the mayor announced the launch of Boston's Way Home Fund. The goal is to raise $10 million in private funds and to create 200 units of housing over the next four years. In Boston, Allison King, NBC10 Boston. Allison, thank you. Also, Inauguration Day in Framingham. That's Yvonne Spicer making history as the city's first mayor. Spicer taking the oath of office just months after residents voted to transition from a town to a city. Senator Elizabeth Warren, also Congresswoman Catherine Clark, they were all there as she took the oath. And not only is Spicer the first mayor of Framingham, she is also the first black woman to be a popularly elected mayor in the state of Massachusetts. And in Newton, the city's first female mayor took office today. Ruth Ann Fuller defeated Scott Lennon back in November. She talked about the importance of her election after taking the oath of office. It's an honor to be the first woman and to break a barrier like that, and I know how much it means to girls and women of all ages. Fuller replaces Seti Warren as Newton's mayor. He left office to run for governor. Next on NBC10 Boston, not the best start to the new year for a town hall on the Cape. Cleanup efforts now underway after a pipe burst. Plus, this two culinary is worried about somebody getting hurt. We're not the only ones dealing with the Arctic temperatures, how it's impacting holiday festivities all over country. Stay with us. Ellen's new show is blowing up prime time. Moving faster, flying longer. NBC 10 Sky Ranger. The super high resolution camera gets you closer to the action. Sky Tracker map overlays show you exactly where the story is happening. NBC 10 Sky Ranger. Only on NBC 10 Boston. Welcome back, everyone. In Yarmouth over the weekend, firefighters traded hoses for brooms after a pipe burst in the attic of a town hall. Now, most of the damage happened in the accessing department. Crews had to take the computers out, remove those ceiling tiles. You can take a look here. And also, they had to dry out those carpets. The water went from the attic through the floor and then to the basement. And some computers were actually destroyed. But the assistant town administrator says important files were backed up. We have a crew on site here that's, you know, as you've seen, working diligently to get things cleaned up ready to go so we can open up tomorrow and then they'll work on some of the uh, some of the more extensive damage. No word yet on how much the cleanup will cost, but the, they do say that they do have insurance. Well, next on NBC10 Boston, another win for an Olympic favorite. The title that Mikhail Schifrin earned with this win today. Plus, we are not the only ones dealing with a frigid new year, how the weather impacted festivities all over the country. Moving faster, flying longer. NBC10 Sky Ranger. Ikea. Welcome back to NBC10 Boston News at 7. A very cold new year for people across the country. And of course, right here in New England. The weather impacting some plans for the start of 2018. NBC's Dan Sheneman takes a look. Braving single digit temperatures in Boston. Hundreds traded in their parkas for swimsuits. <laughs> take part in one of the city's oldest traditions, a New Year's Day dip into icy Boston Harbor. It's a great way to start a year. But for some communities in New Jersey, those time-honored festivities put on hold by the brutal cold. Boy, it's too cold and they're just worried about somebody getting hurt. No dip in Cleveland either, because crews couldn't cut a hole in ice over Lake Erie. The sub-freezing temperatures closing down an ice skating park in Des Moines, Iowa over the weekend. And in Ohio, Columbus's annual 5K was on inside. Runners taking the treadmills instead of the streets. I made the decision just based on safety factors, the risk of being outdoors for a prolonged period of time. The cold has already turned deadly. In Milwaukee, two men found within hours of each other. The medical examiner confirming both deaths cold weather related. 
and in Detroit, where temperatures dropped to two below overnight, a man was found dead in front of a church. And forecasters warn the Arctic blast is expected to maintain its icy grip on most of the country through the week. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Well, a frigid start to the ice fishing season in Maine. The cold air has helped larger bodies of water freeze faster. But experts say seeing the ice does not mean it's actually safe. The Maine Warden Service says that fishermen always need to measure the ice no matter how cold it is. Areas that you know that you have flowing water, you just want to stay away from. Late last month, one of the Warden Service's planes actually went through thin ice while attempting to land on Eagle Lake. A reenactment of raising the nation's first flag has been postponed because of the cold. The annual ceremony in Somerville was supposed to happen today, but will now happen on March 4th. It marks the raising of the Grand Union flag on Prospect Hill on New Year's Day, 1776. All right, let's get to early warning weather now. The Frog Pond in Boston actually closing <laughs> early today. There is some cold weather out there, getting creative in the process. It's like on Twitter, quote, Frog Pond closing at 4 p.m. New Year rushes in, Arctic blast, never ending, too cold to ice skate. Hashtag haiku. That is a very cold frog right there. Our meteorologist Pete Bouchard joining us right now. So we've been talking about the cold weather, of course. But something cool out there tonight. We have the super moon, right? We do, yeah. It's bright and beautiful, and it's a little bit closer, a little bit brighter. That's why we call it the super moon. So it'll be around again at the end of the month, actually, the 31st. This is one of two full moons. And just how, how much bigger there is, uh, take a live look at it right now. How much bigger is it? It's approximately 14% <laughs> bigger, Chris, and about 30% brighter. There it is. It looks pretty, and against that the crest of new fallen snow in some places, well, it looks mighty pretty. And it will be shining and bright. You may not need the headlights. Just kidding. It's uh, always wise to have the headlights on tonight, but it'll be that bright, bright enough for shadows even tonight. Approximately 221,000 miles from old Earth. That's kind of close. Uh, first of two supermoons this month. Uh, the Charles is just about frozen thanks to this long stretch of cold weather. And yes, it's almost record setting. Consecutive days below 20 degrees, high temperatures below 20. We're on number six. Today was number six. Tomorrow should be number seven. I'm forecasting that we're about 19 for a high temperature. And it looks like we're in good company here from the 1800s, right? So this snap of cold weather is significant, significant enough to create a lot of winter kill. I think vegetation will really suffer from this. We may lose a lot of plants, maybe in your garden, and maybe some trees uh, may go down too. Not some of the hardy ones, the oaks. I mean, the ones that are native to New England, I think we're good. But maybe an ornamental maple, that kind of thing, you know, stuff that's been brought in from afar. It's not used to this really, really intense cold. Well, this where we finally at least tied a record. We didn't break it. Five below this morning. Yikes. And that was set back. Oh, there it is again. 100 years ago, 1918. Our temperature's now in the single digits. Very simple math. Up in Reading is five. Cambridge is six. Milton is seven. Don't ask me to add all those numbers together. Five in Weston Wellesley at four. I can do calculus, but I can't do simple math. I can't balance a checkbook for some reason. Eight in Brockton. Ten in Barnstable, and the cold is very intense across Hudson Bay and back near Winnipeg. This is amazing, right? There's a big block up over uh, Alaska. It's been a tremendously warm there, like 20 to 30 degrees above normal, and the cold has been pouring down into central Canada and the northeast, too. We might see a couple of clouds from this weather system roam in, and they'll just roam out by tomorrow. We do have a mostly sunny sky in our forecast, and the temperatures over the next couple of days, 19 and 29. Wow, Wednesday's actually a considerable turnaround. We could almost call it milder. And that will feel pretty good with some sunshine and a few fair weather clouds. Now, the jet stream is still dipping down into the deep south, but it's not done digging. It'll go beyond Atlanta and come down into Miami even, maybe even digging across the Bahamas. There it picks up a storm, and this is important. Follow along now. That storm perturbs the jet stream. Don't even bother about that. And what it does is it also pushes back some of the Arctic air. It peels it back so that our temperatures get a chance to moderate. Some of that moderation coming on Wednesday, more so on Thursday, where we reach out to 30 degrees desperately and try to hold on to it. The worry is with the storm, the wind and the coastal flooding potential. This is a monster offshore. It does not look like, and nor do any of the models show it coming right at us, but just being in its presence is going to be enough for accumulating snow, for strong and damaging winds. I'm worried about power outages. I'm worried about the possibility of coastal flooding. And it looks like, too, we'll have some whiteouts, not necessarily from the heavy snow, but from the fact that the snow is blowing sideways 
preliminary numbers are not all that impressive for a blockbuster storm at sea between three and six inches. We'll have to see how that timing works out on when the snow arrives and whether those numbers stay solid. But I'm not talking about 12 to 24 inches right now. Four tonight, though. Tomorrow, 19, and that northwest wind is steady but not intense. There's the storm and post-storm. Wow, that Arctic air comes right back at us, and it's intense. And next week, we're back into the 40s. What? And that does look like rain. What would that be like, too? On Tuesday, it's a thaw. See if we can build on it. Chris, back to you. Looking forward to that, Pete. Thank you. The Patriots getting a break on this New Year's Day as they now get ready for the playoffs. All that after wrapping up the regular season with a win against the hated New York Jets yesterday. With that win, the Patriots get the top seed in the AFC playoffs. And, of course, with that, they get a first-round bye. It is on to Gillette Stadium Saturday, January 13th. They will take on the lowest remaining seed among Kansas City, Tennessee, and Buffalo. And following the road to the Winter Olympics, an athlete with strong New England ties continuing to move up in the record books. Today, 22-year-old Michaela Schifrin, she won a parallel slalom city event, earning her 37th World Cup victory. Congratulations. Just amazing. What a run she is on. Schifrin is now tied for sixth on the list of all-time winners. Lindsey Bond leads with 78 victories. Now, Schifrin is favored to defend her Olympic slalom title at the Winter Games in Pyeongchang next month. She's a graduate of the Burke Mountain Academy in Vermont. She won that in Norway, by the way. Also today, you saw it here on NBC Boston during the NHL Winter Classic. Today, we got to meet several members of the U.S. Olympic men's and women's ice hockey teams. For the first time in 20 years here at NBC 10 Boston, there are no current NHL stars competing, but there are some veterans on the team, including Team USA captain and BC alum, Brian Gianta, and a forward who turned down NHL contract offers this year in order to pursue a dream of getting an Olympic medal. Any familiar face as well? Megan Duggan there, captain of the U.S. women's Olympic hockey team and a Massachusetts native. Looking forward to all of them competing. And just a reminder, NBC10 Boston is your home for the Winter Olympics. Our very own Audrey Assistio, Brian Shackman, and J.C. Monahan, they will be heading to South Korea. And they, of course, will give you live team coverage. All this starts February 8th. We are all very excited here at NBC10 Boston. And so to come here on NBC10 Boston, looking for a new low-impact way to get fit for the new year. The exercise regimen that's been around for a while, but now getting a lot of popularity. Stay with us. Check this out. One parents for cats and dogs. Tonight, start the new year with NBC. Yeah. It all begins with an all-new season of The Wall. You're the first who have cracked $2 million. <laughs> then, the boys are back in the two-hour season premiere of Better Late Than Never. Shut up. Report with the new year, of course, comes all those New Year's resolutions. If you're looking for a different way to work out, this option is one that's been around for quite a while, but not many people actually know about it. NBC's Erica Edwards explains what Nia is all about. This exercise class is all about doing your own thing. Whatever feels right. I walked into a Nia class and I thought, what is making these people be able to move in such a juicy way? NIA stands for Non-Impact Aerobics. It's exercise fusion with elements of Tai Chi, yoga, Taekwondo, jazz, and interpretive dance. Really, however you want to express yourself. No, no. It's a way to tap into your own power, into your own strength, and to be free. For some, that means freedom from pain. I've had both shoulder surgery done, and it's helped me with my movement in my shoulders and helping me with my physical therapy. Experts say it's not unusual for people to resist a lot of movement after surgeries. Afraid they'll be in too much pain, that's where Nia shines. So by doing these kinds of classes where they're encouraging them to move at their own level, in their own style, in whatever way they can, the idea would be to release tension within the body. Some have credited the program with relieving stress and anxiety, as well as increasing their overall well-being. No matter what kind of a mood I'm in when I come in, I leave very uplifted. It just has that way about it. A mind-body connection with real health benefits. Erica Edwards, NBC News. 
I'm in, man. man. They're doing a good job. I don't think you and I would do a good job. Uh, I got no rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. I got no form. No hey, uh, the 10 day forecast has a little bit of a thaw, but before we get there, we have a storm on Thursday. Ooh. Brings us wind and snow, and that is a big storm at sea. We get a lot of wind, and I'm concerned about coastal flooding, too. Maybe damaging wind. Uh, we're just hoping for 20s and 30s compared to what we've had. We might get there. Near there. We'll take it. That's all we have for this half hour. Be sure to join us tonight at 11 o'clock. I'm Chris Emma here with Pete Bouchard. Access Hollywood is up next. Have a great night. My grand